Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Daniel Ball and you're watching lesson two in the series that I'm doing on the Cisco meeting server. And today we're looking at what's new with CMS. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about CMS customization. Now, starting with version 2.8, CMS introduced customizable layouts. Now, this is a licensable feature, and basically it allows administrators more flexibility to create and apply their own layouts. You know, layouts that might suit whatever, you know, your specific needs are. So here you can create layouts uh, that were previously available on the legacy Telepresence MCU, plus you can also create new layout. Okay, and support is included for single and dual screen endpoints. Now the customization license is required before you can actually customize your layouts. However, this license is no longer a per item license feature, meaning that you don't have to buy one license for each customized change, okay? And so now uh, this feature is gonna be either enabled or disabled depending on your license. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, Cisco Meeting Management Server or CMM. Now, this is a tool to manage many different aspects of a CMS solution and, uh, and it also provides you know, added services of its own. Uh, so you know, in the end, you, you end up with a really robust solution. Now, prior to CMS version 2.9, uh, LDAP mappings for importing users had been configured via the CMS API, but starting in version 2.9, you can now use the CMM to enter LDAP server details and configure LDAP mappings. Okay, so LDAP users are added via mappings to existing groups on your LDAP server. Meeting management uses your LDAP server to authenticate these users by checking their group membership when they sign in. Okay, now with uh, CMS and CMM version 2.6 or greater. Okay, so this allows for uh, SIP participants to be moved from one meeting to another by an administrator of the meeting. So this would be useful for an active meeting where you need to move one or more participants to a different meeting that's active. You know, other uses could be like, for example, uh, if someone has dialed into the wrong meeting or if someone needs to go straight from one meeting to another, you know, these kinds of situations. And uh, it can also be used for you know, like breakout sessions or for, uh, to go into bigger meetings and so forth. Okay, now any participants can be moved between any type of call uh, with a few exceptions. Uh, one of those exceptions is that you cannot move participants between dual-homed conferences, okay? And if you're not sure what dual-homed is, uh, just be grateful that you don't have to worry about it. And we're not even going to go into that in this series because Microsoft changed their platform from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams, and uh, Micro Microsoft Teams isn't supported with CMS, so we're not even going to go down that rabbit hole. If you don't, have to, if you don't know what it is, uh, just be happy you don't have to deal with that. Uh, so this uh, second case, uh, too, is that you uh, can't move Cisco meeting app users. And three, you cannot move third-party clients such as uh, Microsoft Skype for Business clients, okay? Okay, so let's talk about labels. Uh, now, during an active meeting, you can change the display name uh, or label for any of the connected participants, okay? And the display name that you enter is going to be seen by all participants in the meeting, uh, at least for as long as they're connected. Okay, so the label change feature requires CMS 2.8 or later. And uh, up to 50 characters are allowed for each label. And finally, the label remains even if the participant is moved to another meeting. Okay, so now let's talk about pain placement. Now we have active speakers, so the, you know whoever's uh, talking the loudest or even the longest, uh, they're gonna get prominence. Uh, there's also make important, uh, you know, importance is uh, a participant who's always going to be seen, even if they're not speaking, okay, like a CEO or something like this. And uh, now with CMS and uh, CMM version 2.7 or greater, in an active meeting, an administrator can place SIP connected participants in specific, uh, in specific panes uh, so that they're always seen in that specific location on the screen, uh, even if they're not speaking. 
Okay, so this is pain placement. Now, similar to importance, pain placement is useful uh, if there are people in the meeting that want to be visible at all times. So again, this could be, uh, for example, a CEO, or it could also be, you know, just an invited speaker or a guest or something along these lines. Okay. And for participants who are placed in pains, you can decide whether they should see themselves in the reserved pain or if they should rather see, you know, a blank pain uh, or, or even the next participant. Okay. And so a couple of things to note on that pain placement can only be set after the meeting has started and uh, only active participants can be assigned to pains. Okay, so the screen layout assigned will determine the panes that are uh, displayed, and the pain position in the layout determines the order being filled by the video of uh, participants. So if a placed participant disconnects from the meeting, then the pain that was assigned to them will be displayed as just a blank pain. Okay, and if you want the participant to be placed in the same pane after they reconnect, then you would have to add them again. Okay, so the figure on this slide shows the pane positions on an endpoint with the screen layout set to all equal nine. Uh, this is a fixed layout, so if there are more than nine participants, then the layout won't change to display the additional participants. Okay, the numbers here indicate the pane position or the order that uh, they'll be filled. Uh, it's not necessarily the level that uh, of their importance or anything like that. Okay, so the pain labeled number one is filled first, followed by pain label uh, labeled two, and so on. Okay, so meeting management can also access TMS phone books. So video operators can use them to look up contacts when they add participants to a meeting. Now the search will work the same as it does when you search for contacts in, T in TMS, okay? And to let your video operators use TMS phone books, unfortunately you've gotta do a little bit of setup in TMS and CMM, uh, and of course we'll walk through this in uh, one of our labs so you'll get to see it firsthand. But when you finish setting it up, uh, the result is that you know when you click this Add Participants button, uh, the names are searchable in CMM and uh, it makes it infinitely easier. Again, we'll, we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later. Okay, as of uh, CMS version 3.0 and later, the Cisco Meeting Manager is required to run parallel with the Cisco Meeting Server. Uh, all licensing is managed by CMM, and as you can see here, the licensing is disabled by default. Okay, so one point worth making here is that the licensing menu option doesn't allow you to enable licensing. The licensing menu on CMM only allows you to monitor license consumption. Okay, so in order to enable licensing for CMM, you've got to use the settings menu. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Uh, first, you'll need to select the settings menu from the left column in CMM. Then you'll want to select the licensing submenu. After this, go ahead and click the change button from the middle of the page. And then this is going to bring up a pop-up window that allows you to choose the licensing mode that you want to use. Okay, so this is where the licensing can get a little bit confusing uh, because the traditional licensing method still requires the use of packs that must be manually uploaded into the Cisco License Manager. And uh, you have to do this manually to fulfill the packs and generate the license licenses. Now, this creates limitations in any future changes that you might want to make that are related to your licensing consumption. For example, adding more licenses or uh, perhaps if you wanted to add more servers, you know, if you were looking to create a more scalable and resilient deployment model. Okay, now the alternative option is to choose smart licensing. Now, this allows administrators to monitor and manage their licenses consumption more granularly. Okay, so this, uh, again, this gets a little bit confusing, but just stay with me on this, okay? Now, if a customer upgrades their CMS or CMM solution from a previous version to version 3.0, then they have the choice between smart licensing and traditional licensing, okay? This is if customers upgrade their CMS or CMM solution from a previous version to version 3.0, they can choose. 
uh, between smart licensing and traditional licensing. licensing. However, if uh, a customer or if you were to buy a CMS solution now, starting with version 3.0 or later, then smart licensing is the only licensing solution that's going to be available to you. Okay? So on step four here, if you were to select the radio button besides traditional licensing and then select save, then nothing else would have to be configured on CMM for you to use those licenses. Okay? Okay, so now that we've uh, selected traditional licensing, uh, if you were to go back and click on the licenses menu again, uh, you'd see a summary of all the licenses that are available to this CMS, uh, like we have here. Because remember, before we were getting this page, but now we can see a summary of all the licenses available to this CMS. Again, we'll lab this uh, so you can see the flow of it more easily, but uh, that is traditional licensing. Okay, now let's talk about smart licensing. First off, uh, you'll need to make sure that you have already signed up for a free smart licensing account. And then once you've got that out of the way, uh, you'll need to enable smart licensing. Now to do this, from the settings licensing menu, click change. And of course, select smart licensing from the menu and then click save. And once you have, uh, once you've saved the licensing mode, you'll need to click edit besides the transport setting here. And uh, this will allow you to sign into this, uh, the Cisco Smart Software Manager, SSM, and generate a registration token. Now, if you click edit here, a new pop-up window is going to come up and ask you to sign in to your SSM. And unfortunately, I can't show you this because my lab doesn't have a smart licensing account associated with it in order for me to demonstrate this. But you know, just for your information, after you sign in, you'll need to click on the Generate Token button and copy the token you created. Then once you've generated the token and closed the pop-up window, you'd, here you'd want to click on the Register button. And then you can paste that token into the box indicated. And then just click the Register button to complete the process. Okay, now when clicking on the Licensing menu, uh, in the License Summary table, you're able to edit the number of licenses that are allocated for this cluster. Okay, and the details that you see in meeting management are not reported back to Cisco SSM. Okay, so that means that you can apply them to any CMS or any cluster as you see fit, and you could change it at any time as well. Okay, so with this option, uh, of course, there's a lot more flexibility with uh, smart licensing. Okay, finally, I want to wrap up this lesson by mentioning the Cisco Meeting Server web application, or just web app for short. This is a soft client that was added in the 2.9 release. Now, as I mentioned before, this new web app is the replacement product for the old WebRTC client and uh, Cisco Meeting app. This new application runs on the WebBridge 3 service, which doesn't require the XMPP service anymore. And one of the benefits to the new web app is that it has a wider range of browser support. All of the major browsers are supported here. Finally, the web app's user interface has also been improved to enhance the experience of video conferencing with your team and to simplify the process of finding spaces. Now it's a lot easier to find your spaces to start a meeting or to join meetings you can invite guests to join a meeting by copying the meeting details and uh, optionally restrict access to a meeting using passcodes. Again, we're going to be labbing all of this, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I think this is probably a good place to end lesson two. In the next lesson, we're going to look at initial configurations for getting our CMS environment set up. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys then. Bye for now.